What is going on guys? Today I got a pretty exciting video because we're gonna be testing a brand new sensor, industry kind of like changing sensor from this company called Hamilton, which I got uh, like distribution somehow in Las Vegas in Nevada. Pretty much like the whole West Coast because I guess uh, you still buy it. But long story short is that this sensor right here, you can program it with your phone. There's Manuel. Needs, needs a race. So we're gonna go ahead and see how easy this sensor is to program with your phone. And we're gonna go ahead and install it into a customer car. At the same time, I'm gonna be recording some B-roll because I'm gonna be doing a promotional video at the same time, uh, you know, through for TikTok and for my YouTube channel to see if we can market this sensor a little bit better. Following with uh, more instructions on how this actually works. So I'm going to show you the steps on how I program and install one of these sensors. It's not necessarily a product review, but if you want a product review, be sure to subscribe and like this video because I will be having one in my channel very soon. Also, if you are interested in purchasing some of these sensors, I am selling them at $29 at thetiredealer.com, which I will leave a link in the description below. Or if you want to buy them wholesale, I can leave them up to $22 per sensor if you buy over 100 of these TPMS sensors. But anyways, let's go ahead and start. So to start programming the sensor, you have to scan the QR code in the box and it will lead you to a link to download the app. This I like because it's actually very convenient. Then start by opening the app, select the year, make and model, and then open the TPMS box. Um, these TPMS, uh, or at least these Hamilton TPMS sensors come with a dual valve, which means that uh, they include a regular rubber and aluminum TPMS valve. So in the case your vehicle has either or, you won't need to purchase a new valve to match that of your current uh, sensor. Once you have already selected all the appropriate information in the app, we are ready to program the sensor. Now keep note that the programming of the sensor is possible only through NFC enabled devices. So for example, if you don't know if your phone has NFC capabilities, most likely or you for sure have capabilities if you have the ability to pay with Apple Pay or Google Pay using your phone. Uh, in those cases, your phone is compatible with this tech. If not, then it may not be. You can always reach out to Hamilton customer support just to get a list of the supported devices, but it should be fairly simple to know if your phone has NFC capabilities or not. Now, the sensor's white side must be placed on top of the side of the phone, uh, which is where the NFC sensor is located. Programming is pretty instant and you get a cool check mark indicating that your sensor has been programmed. Now, the next thing we will need to do is install the actual TPMS sensor into the wheel, which from this point on is just a very regular and simple process for a tire shop or compared to other TPMS sensor installs. Now be sure that when you are installing the TPMS sensor into the wheel, you are careful not to break it. Preferably, I like to unscrew the TPMS sensor with the valve so I can pull the valve, uh, you know, if I have to pull the valve hard enough, I won't damage the sensor. Uh, but in this case, we risked it and it worked. Next, I try to relearn the sensors so that in order for you, your TPMS light to go away, you need two things. One is to have the sensor programmed to the car, you, and the second thing is a relearning process. Some vehicles allow relearning of TPMS sensors manually, like Toyotas and Fords have a specific process you have to do in order to relearn sensors manually. But in this case, for this Kia, we really only needed to drive the vehicle and activate the sensors by reading them with a TPMS tool. Uh, some of these TPMS reprogramming tools can be found in Amazon for as low as 25 bucks. Uh, but again, most of the local tire shops, at least here in Vegas, if you go and ask for a relearn, most of them don't, won't even charge you a thing. I also noticed that when I was trying to scan the sensor, our tool wasn't working or it wasn't reading the sensor. So I decided to try and try it, but just it didn't work. So at the end, we ended up calling Hamilton customer support and they explained that there was a glitch apparently with the programming side of the app. And so we were told to simply program the sensor using a 2017 Kia Sorento, uh, I guess, information and to program the sensor that way. So we called technical support and they told us that we had to configure the sensor as a Kia Sorento or Sorento 2018 to 2020 and then that should fix it. So I went ahead and programmed it. I went ahead in my programming tool, 
selected Kia Soul 2021 and then programmed it, like see if it would scan. And it works now. So it should say, obviously there's zero PSI because there's zero pressure, but it reads. So what I would recommend is you buy these sensors, you program them, and then you ask your tie shop before installing them to confirm that they all read if you don't have a TPMS tool that can read them. If you wanna invest in one, I believe in Amazon they're like 20 bucks. I'll leave a link if I found one on Amazon, but they should read. That's the most important thing because if they don't read, you don't wanna have them installing them and then finding out that they don't read and then it's just bad on you because they're probably gonna charge you more because they have to do work again. This was a little bit unfortunate because we had already installed the TPMS sensors and so we had to uninstall them and I guess reprogram them because the phone cannot program the sensor once the sensor has been installed. In order for the sensor to be programmed, your phone has to physically touch the white side of the sensor which is obviously physically impossible to do once the sensor has been mounted into a wheel. So now the moment of truth. Let's, let's see if that light goes away. Right now it's flashing, so whenever it's flashing, probably gonna have to like go drive it around a bit. But anyways, after that, we decided to drive off the vehicle for about five to 10 minutes. After that, we finally saw the light to turn off, uh, as you guys see. And that is really it, guys. I mean, overall, I think it was a very smooth experience, except for that kind of glitch with the app. I mean, that was kind of a bit of a unfortunate. Uh, but if you are a shop, I would still prefer to use the normal TPMS sensors that are programmed with an ATAC tool. Uh, but again, if you're just someone who's just trying to save some money uh, buying some sensors online, definitely these sensors pay off because uh, at least here in our shop, we have sometimes customers bring sensors that they buy online, but they weren't programmed and we can't program them because we need special tools for those. Uh, so, you know, these having sensors like these is just flexible to the point where you can take the sensor of your choice, program it, and then you can tell the technician or the tire shop that these sensors have already been programmed and all they need to do is just do a normal relearn. But well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be doing another product review of another TPMS sensor that has a similar tech. So remember to subscribe. Be sure to help me by smashing that like button and I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.